everybody, welcome to Take Off with John Clark, presented by Live Casino Hotel Philadelphia, and we are once again on the road in Clearwater, Florida, for the start of Philly spring training. This team made it all the way to the World Series last year. They added Trey Turner, Taiwan Walker, and some bullpen pieces. They think they can win it all this year. So I got to sit down and have a nice conversation with the new $300 million man, the new leadoff man, Trey Turner, along with the leader, Kyle Schwarber, led the National League in home runs last year, and new Phillies pitcher, Taiwan Walker, along with Aaron Nola. The Phillies are trying to work on a long-term deal for Aaron Nola. He finished fourth in Cy Young voting last year for the National League. Enjoy these conversations with the 2023 Phillies. All right, we are joined by Trey Turner. And Trey, we happen to uh, catch you at one of your first BPs at Pitchers and Catchers. So let's take a little, little look at the video here. This is funny. So you're taking BP and a little bit of an initiation here. You hit a car. Got a good line there. Shouldn't have parked there. I mean, you're asking for it if you're going to park near near a, a baseball field or in BP. You know, whether it's behind the fence or on the sides. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's what a lot of what I expect signing here is just <laughs> going through this, and uh, you know, obviously it happened day one, which is pretty funny. But uh, boys, just giving me a hard time. Kevin Long got you there. Thirty million reasons oh, to yeah. afford it or pay I, for it. Yeah, I'm sure I'll hear that for a while. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm the new guy with the, the new contract, so I'll hear that for a while, but uh, I guess it comes with territory. And how cool is that? You get a sense of how fun this clubhouse is and the vibe with all the guys? Yeah, I mean, like I said, when I signed, I kind of I kind of had that feeling already, kind of, you know, knew that was the case. Um, I said a little bit earlier today, it's just feel like I've played against these guys so much that I know them, and, you know, coming in here, um, you know, I haven't played with Wheeler, Nola, uh, Reese, JT, and these guys, but I've talked to them so much that it feels like, you know, we kind of know each other a little bit. So uh, it's been fun, a fun couple days. Uh, you know, a few more guys will be coming in here shortly and, and kind of have everybody together, and it'll be a lot of fun just getting this thing started and uh, getting on the right track. And what kind of leader is Kyle Schwarber? We saw it here last year, but what kind of dude is Kyle? Yeah, I mean, he, he's, uh, he's fun, man, and, and he kind of – takes the pressure off you a little bit. Sometimes guys are hard on themselves and he, he lets you know you can have fun whether you're doing good or doing bad. You can have a little bit of fun with it and make fun of yourself. And um, you know, that says a lot when, when guys are taking themselves too seriously or they're going through you know a tough time throughout the year, whether it's offense, defense, pitching, whatever it is, uh, he can make fun of himself and, and kind of show you that you can do it as well. So uh, he brings a lot to the table and uh, he's one of my favorites. Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola both said they don't have a lot of favorite players to watch, but Zach said he loved watching you. You're one of his favorite players to watch. He's glad he doesn't have to face you anymore. What do you like most about your game? What are you proud of the most as far as your game goes? Oh, I don't know. I, I think, you know, for me, I just I like to compete and like to learn, and, and I feel like, uh, you know, the product's never finished, so I'm always trying to get better. Um, you know, as you get older and things change, you learn things, your body changes, but you got to continue to find ways to be good and productive. And, um, you know, I feel like over my career, I've adapted and tried to become a better player every step of the way. So, um, you know, I don't know what that is or what it looks like, but I know that I'm just going to try to compete and, and try to you know, do as much as I can to help us win. So where does this speed come from? And did you ever think of being a receiver? No, I I was little when I was a kid. I was <laughs> never going to gonna play football I'd, I'd be uh, I probably wouldn't be here if I was playing football when I was a kid but um, no I didn't want to play football but um, you know I think my both my parents claim it uh, my grandfather on my mom's side claims it um, I think I, you know it's definitely a little bit of uh, you know God-given uh, talent and ability but at the same time I worked at it a lot throughout my life and started in high school and um, you know still go to the same guy kind of a running coach if you will um, I still go to him now and I went to him and started you know, when I was 14, 15 years old. So I've been going to him for a while and uh, work at it, try to be, uh, you know, efficient and quick and uh, try to use that speed to my advantage. You were pretty smooth on that slide at Citizens Bank Park. That became a meme or a gif. I mean, how cool was it? How many times did you watch that? I've watched it a bunch because everybody sends it to me or talks about it. So I have to see it all the time. Um, you know, it's something I've been doing for a long time. I guess that one, I played it off a little bit better. And uh, I don't know. I. I I feel like every interview I do now, I, I'm always talking about it, and something I've always done, just never really thought about it, and now it's you know kind of went viral and whatnot, and um, 
know, it looks pretty good, but hopefully uh, many more of those uh, going forward. Sorry I went to the go-to. You've had this no, a bunch of times. You're good, you're good. I expect it. How about the atmosphere at Citizens Bank Park? How much are you looking forward to being a Philly yeah. in that atmosphere? Yeah, no, I've been on the other side. I've, I've heard it quite a bit, but um, you know, talking about the playoffs last year, just watching it on TV, you could see the atmosphere and um, how crazy that town is. And then uh, now watching, you know, football playoffs, that was, uh, you know, a lot of the same fans going over there and, and uh, bring that you know atmosphere to, to football as well so it's just sports town and, and that's what we want that's what we want to play in front of and um, you know the energy is always fun especially in a long season and, and getting into the playoffs um, those are big moments and, and big uh, you know memories that we can share with each other and uh, they make it special the guys in here who were here last year and went to the World Series they say this team is better when you showed up here and you see the amount of talent you look around the clubhouse just how talented is this team? yeah um, I mean, you said it. Obviously, they you know they went there last year, and now we added a lot of a lot of guys this year and made some moves that I think really really helped us. And and hopefully we got some young guys coming up as well that can help us too. So it, it takes everybody. You know, I think they you know it's 25, 26 guys at the beginning of the year, but it's going to take 40, 50 guys throughout an entire season to uh, you know get to where we want to go. So you need that talent, but um, talent doesn't always win. You got to put the work in and, and execute. And um, you know I think we we got the right uh, amount of talent with. Uh, guys who want to work and get better and, and uh, execute as well. Rob Thompson said the other day that you will probably lead off, uh, especially with Bryce being out for a while. I know you've gotten this question before as well. How happy are you in that leadoff spot, or, or is that where you're most comfortable? Yeah, I think, you know, I, that's where I was most comfortable my whole life and, and, and early on in my career for sure. But uh, the last few years, I've definitely moved around a lot and got more comfortable with, you know, two and three. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, leadoff helps me. Um, kind of be a more dangerous player, use my speed a little bit more and help the team out a little bit. Um, you know, I talk about scoring runs and I don't care how you score them, whether it's, you know, stolen bases or doubles, homers, whatever it is, but it's about scoring runs. And I think, uh, you know, being in the leadoff spot, that's my job, scoring runs, and that's what, uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. We saw the other day Manny Machado said he was going to opt out. When Bryce Harper came here, 13 years, no opt-outs, no trade, he wanted to stay here. How much did that kind of start a foundation of, okay, now we'll have other guys that want to join this team? For sure. I mean, every organization, I think, needs to build around somebody. And, um, you know, when you can get a guy like Bryce, uh, who's, you know, a top five, top ten player in baseball every year, um, and he's got a name behind him and, and, uh, and is a good person, uh, that's a start. That's somebody you want to build around. And he was definitely, you know, the piece that, that started this thing. And this is, this is why we are where we are now is because of him. So um, he's a big piece, and, and guys have jumped on, and we've made some good signings and uh, got a good ball club. But it takes everybody, and, um, you know, I think uh, you got to kind of tip, it, your, tip your cap to him because he was definitely the start of it. And the familiarity you have with him, how much does that help you coming into this situation along with the familiarity with the other guys? Yeah, with everybody. I mean, with him for sure. Um, I was texting him a little bit this offseason, asked him questions and stuff about um, the city. And, and, you know, he's always spoke highly of it, even the years leading up into it, um, up into, you know, free agency for me. Uh, he loved it here. And, um, you know, I knew that going in. And then same thing with the other guys. They just uh, seem to have so much fun with each other. And it seems like a great couple house, great city to be a part of. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely a factor, and, and, and it helps out right now, you know, when you're trying to meet everybody and get, get to know everybody, when people can joke around a little bit and make it easier on you throughout the day and uh, make it more normal and not so formal, you know, that's what I like. So um, those guys are, are part of that for me, and uh, it's been fun, uh, fun getting back with them, and uh, hopefully we get Bryce down here soon, obviously, and then uh, we get everybody together. Final question for you. We saw at your press conference you had great hair, <laughs> but you come down here, you see Dave Dombrowski, Rob Thompson, he's got a beautiful head of yeah. black hair. You got some guys in there. Who's got the best hair on this Phillies team? Uh, that's good. I didn't think about those guys. They do have good, good, uh, good uh, set of hair on them. But I think uh, I'll never take the cake. I mean, you got to give it to Bryce. Probably he, he puts in the effort. I've seen the, the work he puts in uh, to keep that thing going. So he's got he's got the uh, he's got the looks. But. Um, we might have to vote on in spring training. Maybe get the rookies to vote on it. And see see what we got. <laughs> and Bryce does have a commercial, so that, yeah, that, that's hard to top. It's hard to top. Points. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Welcome to Philly. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time, man. Yeah, of course. Appreciate. Thank it. you. All right, we are here with Kyle Schwarber, and when you show up for this spring training, you guys went to the World Series last year, but do you think this team is more talented and deeper? Um, I mean, I think if you look on the on paper, we, we got a really talented team, and. Um, I wouldn't say people are coming in here uh, complacent. Uh, there's definitely a, there's a there's a goal in mind, and there's going to be a lot of steps that it's going to get us to that point. But uh, 
you know, when you when you look and see the guys in here, see the excitement, uh, see the see the edge, you see the work. Um, you know, it, it's definitely it's exciting, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting this thing going and uh, you know see where it takes us. You know, last year it seemed like the team really got close, came together, winning. It was fun. Went to the World Series, got a taste of it. Do you think everybody kind of realizes how special that is, and they want more of that? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, playoff baseball is an, an, it's an addicting feeling, and then especially when you add the World Series on top of that, uh, that's the only thing you really think about is getting back to that part, getting back to uh, you know, one the playoffs, two. Uh, trying to get to the World Series and obviously trying to win two more games. So um, that's going to be the, the, the biggest thing for us is just taking it step by step. You know, we don't want to look too far ahead. We're not we're not saying, hey, we're going to go to the World Series. You know, there's there's going to be steps and there's going to be hurdles that we need to get through throughout this whole season. But uh, you know, I think the positive thing is is knowing that we can do it. That's the biggest thing. Knowing there's a, there's a belief that we can do it. And then now we just got to go out there, prepare, work, and, and take it day by day. Zach Wheeler was telling me he doesn't have many favorite players to watch in baseball, but he loves watching Trey Turner play. How about you? What what makes Trey so fun to watch? Yeah, I mean, what's there not to like about Trey, uh, the baseball player and the person? You know, he's a five-tool guy. He's got power, speed, defense, everything that you'd want, contact. Uh, he's... I think the defense is a little bit underrated, um, and I think you're going to see a really good version of him out there at shortstop. And uh, obviously, whenever he's in the box, he, he's want to threat the the you know hit an extra base hit just with you know not obvious not only the speed but also the the, the power and uh, the contacts just out of this world the contact rate. So you know if he puts the ball in play, there's a good chance that he's able to get the first base as well. So. Um, I think it just adds another dynamic to the lineup that uh, you know we didn't have out of the leadoff spot last year. Who was in that leadoff <laughs> spot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. So uh, you know, if I, you, you know, you get a guy who can you know run the bases like he can and uh, create some havoc out there, it's only going to be better for uh, the, the guys behind him. What does it say about this team? Maybe you're moving back from the leadoff spot for him, and then Bryson Stott moves to second. What does it say about the whole group where guys are giving up something? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what's best for the team. Um, you know, everyone wants to win, and everyone wants to win, especially after that taste that we got last year. Um, you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect, right? It's it's. It's going to be a. It's going to. It, there's going to be a challenge throughout the whole year, and there's going to be things that you're going to have to sacrifice uh, throughout this whole year to uh, get to where we want to be. And uh, you know, if we keep, if we have that mindset, that team mindset, the the group mindset of uh, you know us, the the team, the Phillies, uh, we're going to have some pretty good results throughout the year. When you hear that season ticket sales are way up, it's almost like Philadelphia has fallen in love with baseball again. How special is that feeling, kind of bringing winning baseball back to the city? Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, that's when you can show up and, and you're playing in front of a crowd that's, you know, 30, 40,000, 50,000 plus, you know, that that's what we dream for. You know, we feed off energy, uh, you know, where you could be on that, that day game, you know, on a – on a Wednesday, Thursday, whatever it is, and uh, you know, and, and that place is packed, and that thing's just going to bring you up just a jolt right away. So um, that's what we look forward to. That's what we dream for. You know, I think you, everyone saw it last year in the postseason when uh, you know they're sold out, and we just had that extra it factor. That one, they were, you know, they were that that tenth man out there for us. One, and uh, you know, two, we we fed off that energy. Dancing on my own became a big hit, over a billion views. Uh, trying to look for another song for this year. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, it was a good run, but uh, you know, we, this is a new team, this is a new us. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll find something new, and hopefully uh, it can catch on just as well as it as that did. But uh, you know, no offense, it was a second place song. We're, we're looking for better than second place. <laughs> How about the uh, the new rules? Some things changing. Are you uh, happy to say goodbye to the shift? I mean, 
I, I think it'd be crazy to say if you're a left handed and say, no, I want the shift back. <laughs> you know, um, it just adds kind of that extra. You know, I, the way I look at it is when you know when I was a you know when you're a kid and you're growing up and you're learning situational baseball. Um, you know, a lot of it's hitting the ball to the right side. You know, guy on first base, you want to hit the hole, try to get first to third. Uh, you know, guy on second base, move him over the third base, you know, ball to the right side. Uh, used in the middle of the field, things like that. You know, guys aren't, you know, you're, you're not trying to, you know, I think the only thing that you're really trying to do is hit a ground ball to the opposite side of the, the infield when it's a hit and run. You know, those, those are things that you kind of, people would, kind of forget about when you see hitting and don't get me wrong we're hitters we need to make adjustments and uh, you know we're professional hitters so at the end of the day it comes down to us right it's, there's no excuses why uh, people should be making you know outs or where people are standing but you know now there could be a little bit more action and I think the best part is too is you're going to see contact kind of come back into to a big play in baseball uh, you know, you're going to get rewarded for contact and versus trying to uh, hit a ball over the heads of the infield and, and, and things like that. How about the pitch clock for the pitchers? Uh, Rob Thompson says he's got a couple nominees here who really have to get used to it. It'll take a little bit of time. Do you think that this helps the hitters? Because sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the pitcher to get mentally right again and maybe, you know, getting back physically after every pitch. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's going to be a challenge for some guys for sure especially on the mound um, you know people aren't on the same page uh, you know people don't you know they, they throw a couple balls in a row and they're trying to reset and you know you got that that time winding down on you that you know that's something that's just an extra thought you have to think of now so um, you know I think it could be a challenge but I also think too that we're going to embrace it right that it's not something that we're going to you know, cry about and whine about, you know, it's, it's part of the game now. We have to adjust and also too, as a hitter, you know, we, we got to practice it. You know, you see us out here in live BPs, see we have a clock going. Uh, we'll have guys timing us on the side too for the hitters, uh, seeing how long it takes us to get into the box and engage, you know, looking at the pitchers so that it's technically engaged. So, uh, you know, we're practicing and uh, we're going to make sure that, um, you know, we have it right. Final two questions for you. Uh, Trey Turner, one of the first BPs here with the workouts, hit a car. We saw how much fun you guys have with that, and Trey said he's gotten more crap first couple days than he ever has. How tight is this clubhouse, and do you think Trey having experiences with you guys before and being teammates really helps him coming here? Yeah, you know, I think the, the you know, one, the clubhouse, you know, we, we said it last year where, you know, we said at the beginning of the season the bond's going to grow stronger throughout the whole year and, you know, the course of the year. You know, obviously, when you hit the postseason, it's going to get even closer. And then, obviously, in the World Series, it's going to be the closest, right? So, um, you know, we have a really good feel of each other in that clubhouse. And, uh, you know, we like to have fun. And at the end of the day, it's about, you know, winning baseball games. But, you know, when you add a guy like Trey Turner, you know, it's kind of like that perfect fit where the personality is going to fit uh, what we do. You know, it's going to – When I wasn't afraid when he was going to walk in here that – he was going to be shy, walking around, putting his head down. No, you know, this guy's going to fit like a glove. He, he fits all of our personalities. And, uh, you know, obviously having experiences, you know, I got to play with him for a short amount of time. Him being able to play with Bryce, him being to have a lot of time with Kevin Long. Um, you know, and I'm sure that they've, you know, we've all had conversations with him about the team. And it, it, it was definitely a little bit easier for him to walk in here and uh, be himself and, and go from there. Final question for you. We see Manny Machado says he's going to opt out of his deal. What do you think it did when Bryce Harper decided to come here and sign for $13 million with no opt out saying, I want to be here? Seems like it set a foundation for a lot of other guys like yourself to want to come here and know that this group is going to be together. Yeah, you know, I think when you see a guy like Bryce and he's able to do that, to say that he's going to be here and he's not leaving, uh, you know, it's definitely an attention grabber. You know, you, you you got the MVP, and he's wanting to be in a certain spot for a certain amount of time and wanting to do a lot of special things here. And, uh, you know, when you put a group around him, you know, when you have a Wheeler, when you have a JT, when you have a Reese, you know, obviously now adding a Trey, he's going to be here for a long time as well. Um, you know, you look at Nick, you know, the, you just got the foundation here now that there's going to be, we can have sustainable success. And, you uh, 
you know, everyone wants to, to go where you can win. You know, I think that's the biggest thing at the end of the day for players is that we want to win. Uh, you know, we want to go out there. We want to have a chance to get into the postseason, try to make that goal to the World Series. And, uh, you know, that's set here now where we got a lot of really good players for a long time. And like I said, you know, it's not a given that we're, they're going to win. But when you look at it, you can say there's a really good chance of winning here and, uh, and seeing where it can go. Nice, man. Appreciate yep. it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for the time, man. Yep. Thanks. Opioid addiction is a national public health crisis. The Someone You Know podcast from the Independence Blue Cross Foundation offers inspiring stories that challenge stigma, offer hope, and humanizes the disease of addiction. So download the new season three of Someone You Know on all major podcast platforms. All right, we are joined by the newest Phillies pitcher, Taiwan Walker, and give me an idea of what's like to come into this clubhouse with so much talent and the vibe that this team has here. Um, it's special, you know, you uh, coming off a World Series run um, and just seeing just all the new pieces they added to our, our already really good team. Um, it's exciting. How about you with the familiarity coming from the division? Does that help you, do you think? Um, I think so, yeah. I mean, just being able to be uh, pitching this division, um, I've already faced all the teams multiple times, and so um, I kind of have a scouting report on all the players that I'm going to be facing this year, so I think that, that helps to my advantage for sure. From afar, what would you see when you were facing the Phillies and the Mets were coming to town with this lineup that the Phillies had? Um, it's always a tough lineup. You know, they always had guys who could do damage or could do little things right, and um, you know, now that we um, added Trey and – uh, just the guys off the bench, too. Um, it's a real dangerous lineup, literally one through nine. Some of the guys here are saying that this team is better than last year's team with the help of your addition and Trey Turner and guys like that. How deep do you think this rotation can be, especially when you factor in you got a 19 year old yeah. that could make the rotation? Yeah, that's the crazy part. You know, you got a 19 year old, and, um, you know, I, I think that's the key to um, just having a really good team in a good season is just having the uh, depth pieces because uh, it's going to take more than the 26 guys on the opening day roster. Um, and I think um, I think everyone knows that. So just to have that depth uh, in, in the system is going to be really helpful for us. Manager Rob Thompson said in the off season he was a little bit worried about complacency. This yeah. team making the World Series, but then he came here and he saw the guys. He's like, I have to hold some of these guys back. Do you get a sense how hungry this team is? Oh, for sure. Everyone's ready. You know, everyone's ready to go. Um, everyone's locked in already. Um, it's been three, four days, and um, you know, you can just feel the energy. It's it's different. You know, I think. Um, uh, going to the World Series last year gave everyone a taste of it, um, and you know, not winning it kind of just you know put a little fire under our butts, and you know, you know ready to go uh, go, uh, go win it this year. Like Zach Wheeler coming to the Phillies from the Mets, do you love the rivalry of Mets Phillies? You're in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm in the middle of it. Um, I you know I see it on social media every day. You know, we love you, but we hate you. This <laughs> and that. So uh, it should be fun. Yeah. Yeah. How about for you? What are you most proud of as far as what you bring every fifth day as a pitcher? Um, just my I think my energy, um, positivity. I um, you know, and just some knowledge. I mean, I've, I've been around for a while. I think this is my tenth season and. You know, I got to, to play against a lot of – pitch with a lot of uh, great pitchers. You know, I've learned a lot from them. Felix, that Greinke, you know, Scherzer, DeGrom. And so just whatever knowledge I, I bring from them, I can just bring uh, to this step too. Is there a mutual respect with Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, and what can you kind of take from them that they do? Uh, you know, I've, it's been early in the camp. You know, I definitely have to watch them. But I think there will be a lot of conversations just, you know, how we attack hitters and stuff and um, their approach to hitters. And um, I think there's going to be a lot of conversation this year, and it's going to be helpful for all of us. We saw when you were introduced with the Phillies, your kids in, yeah. the, in the clubhouse with their Phillies uniforms on. How much are you a family guy, and how special is it to have your kids kind of see you as a Philly now, and you're going to be here for a while? Big time, you know. It's um, you know I love having my kids there with me, uh, watch me. Um, my two-year-old is still learning, but my five-year-old he knows. Um, it's funny because every time I have my baseball uniform on, he calls me Taiwan Walker. Outside of baseball uniform, I'm dad. So, uh, but no, yeah, um, I'm excited. I'm excited for them to to be in a new city, and uh, you know it's gonna be a good year. You're like a superhero when you get that uniform yeah, onto your kid. Huh? Yeah, basically, basically, yeah, when he's watching me on TV, go Taiwan. I'm like, that's dad still. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. Final question for you. Can you imagine pitching in Citizens Bank Park as a member of the Phillies? Now, you, you came here as a member of the Mets, but you've seen how it was during the playoffs and the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. It's electric. And, uh, you know, I've, I talked to Ryan Howard, and he told me it's the loudest stadium he's ever played in by far. He said he's played in a lot of stadiums. He said Phillies, uh, Citizens Bank Park, you know, playoff time is the loudest he's ever heard anything. So I'm excited for it. 
Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Welcome yeah. to Philly. Thank you. All right, we are here with Aaron Nola, and it was just three months ago you were playing in the World Series. Quickly back here at spring training. How you feeling? How's everything going here? What's the vibe? Vibe's great. Uh, got a lot of guys back that we had last year, which is awesome. It's good to be around them again, and we're excited to get things cranked up again. And uh, it's come quick, but we, we'd rather it be quick. So Zach Wheeler was saying he kept replaying that final game of the World Series in his mind, and he, he can't let it go, actually. And he's hungrier now after tasting that. Do you feel kind of the same way? Yeah, I think a lot of us guys in, the, in that clubhouse um, it hadn't been in the postseason, right? And we got a taste of it, and we know what it's about. And, you know, the game, the game six, obviously, is, is a tough one for us, and losing is a tough one for us. But we got that feeling, and we know we know what we got to do to win. And like I said, we got a lot of guys back this year, uh, plus some new additions that are solid for our team. So we, we want to get back there, and uh, obviously we believe we can. So, yeah, that's interesting. You were in the World Series last year, and then they go out and add some key pieces. Do you think this team is stacked up to be better than last year's? I do, yeah. I, I really do. Um, I think the guys in this organization, the organization, and the guys in that clubhouse were the only people that thought we were going to be in the position we were last year. I don't think anybody kind of expected us to, uh, which made it fun. And... We know what team we got. We know what we're capable of doing. Um, we always knew that, but we got a lot of a lot of talent in there. But I think the chemistry that we have in that clubhouse is takes us to the next level, uh, and it's fun. You know, clubhouse is fun. Uh, a bunch of good guys. So it makes coming to the field every day really good, really fun. When you add a guy like Taiwan Walker to help with the rotation, and then there's a possibility of Andrew Painter out here, 19 years of age, could be in the rotation. The rotation looks like it's going to be deeper this year. Yeah, it's definitely deep. You know, Taiwan is definitely a good good addition to our our staff and eats up innings. He's a competitor. Seen a lot of him when he was with New York and uh, the other teams he's been on. So love how he pitches, love how he competes, and he's a solid rotation spot for us. And, uh, yeah, we got some good young guys coming up. We've got a lot of good guys in the organization. And um, takes everybody. You know, we saw that last year. It takes everybody to win. It takes, it's not just, you know, five starters. It's not just your bullpen guys. There's guys coming up and down, and uh, we saw that last year. So we got a good group, good group of young guys as well. You're going to be glad you don't have to face Trey Turner anymore and he's not on the base pass when you're out there? <laughs> yeah, definitely glad. <laughs> I know every time I face him, is I have to get this guy out because if he gets on first, he's stealing second. He's probably stealing third, too. Uh, He's a game changer. He, he changes the game when he steps in the batter's box. I mean, you know, he's got power too. He hits he hits in the gaps. He hits in, you know, easy doubles, triples. So stolen bases. We've seen him a ton, obviously, playing against him a lot when he was with D.C. And uh, I love watching a guy play. I loved watching him when we were playing against him. So definitely glad he's on our club. Yeah, Zach Wheeler said he doesn't have a lot of favorite players or guys that he likes to watch, but he liked watching Trey Turner. I think it's addicting watching him run. It yeah. really, I think he's one of the most smooth runners uh, and fastest, obviously, in the game. And it doesn't look like he's he's trying to run, you know, which I think, and everybody knows his slide in Philly. Uh, I think last year at home plate, so yeah, that uh, was that, a good gift. That went viral, yeah. yeah. So uh, he's just a fun player to watch. Plays the game the right way. So. Do you realize that this year, like you guys, not that you surprised people, but you kind of crept up on people last year, but now the Phillies might be the hunted because you guys made it to the World Series. You went through the Braves and some rivals. Are you going to be the hunted this year? Teams coming after you this year? I, don't know. I mean, I feel like our division's really strong. Um, you know, everybody in baseball is good nowadays, right? All the teams are super balanced and got really good players, good talent. And at least it's strong too, though. I think uh, it's going to be a battle every single, every time we play the, our division and um, new schedule this year too. So we're playing everybody uh, at least one time. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. And um, yep, I don't know. We're ready. To, we're ready to compete, especially the guys in our division. A couple final questions for you. Obviously, going into the last year of a contract. Do you think something will be worked out for you to stay here with the Phillies and sign another long-term deal? Uh, yeah, I mean, my reps are kind of handling all that stuff right now. 
Um, I love I love the organization. Obviously, I've been here for a while now, and I uh, love the guys on the teams. But you know, just want to focus on this year and try to win a championship with these guys uh, and have fun and stay healthy. So Bryce Harper, he's not going to be able to play for the first couple months at least. Maybe midway you get him back. The team was 32 and 20 without him last year. What's the mentality not having him here for a while? Kind of stinks, right? You know, it's love being around the guy. Uh, obviously, I know he loves being around everybody too, and we know what kind of player he is, person he is, and uh, we got a lot of a lot of strong guys though, and on this ball club. Um, I think like we saw last year, a lot of young guys stepped up when when Bryce was gone, and. Obviously, he's a key player to our to our club, and he's a game changer. And gosh, we saw that in the postseason last year, big time. So, you know, we do we, we just compete uh, without him, and then when he, when he gets back, we know what he does. So I'm just happy that you know he's getting his arm fixed, and you know he'll be back in the outfield again and throwing again. Uh, but yeah, we obviously can't wait to get him back. Final question for you: It is a city of brotherly love. You got to face your brother last year in the postseason and then you see Jason Kelsey facing yeah. Travis Kelsey they didn't actually have to pitch to their brother you know it's not one-on-one -on -one battle but what was going through your mind when you saw that knowing pretty, what you yeah went through? pretty cool man it, it definitely is I mean we didn't play each other in the World Series but it's cool I mean I, I know it's probably hard for their parents as well uh, watching them but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I get these, this question asked to me every year. We play each other, but at the end of the day, like you're trying to win the game and facing them, I don't even know, probably 10, 15 times now. It's kind of like he's another batter in the in the box, right? I'm trying to get him out. He's trying to get hit off of me, and uh, it just it becomes a part of the game, right? Uh, the first couple of times is pretty cool and a little bit nerve wracking, but it just becomes like a routine. Again, just another guy in the lineup, but it definitely is cool. You know, we're definitely fortunate to, to play against each other in the postseason. I mean, I don't know if that will ever happen again. You know, hopefully, you know, maybe maybe one day again. But um, it was cool. We, we, uh, we soaked it up. Well, thanks for the time. Congrats yeah, on getting man. married. Yeah, thank you. Big thank off you season. A lot thanks going on. Yeah, a lot going on. I'm busy, but it's okay. All right. Thanks yeah. for the time. Thank you.